Hi, this is Dr. Gregory Sadler. I'm a professor of philosophy and the president and founder of an educational consulting company called Reason.io, where we put philosophy into practice. I've studied and taught philosophy for over 20 years, and I find that many people run into difficulties reading classic philosophical texts. Sometimes it's the way things are said or how the text is structured, but the concepts themselves are not always that complicated, and that's where I come in. To help students and lifelong learners, I've been producing longer lecture videos and posting them to YouTube. Many viewers say they find them useful. What you're currently watching is part of a new series of shorter videos, each of them focused on one core concept from an important philosophical text. I hope you find it useful as well. In chapter 11 of book 4 of his discourses, Epictetus is going to talk about cleaning the body, bodily cleanliness, or purifying it, if you like. Um, now, why would he be focused on that sort of thing? You know, if you want to play a little bit of what they call devil's advocate and say, aren't you Stoics primarily concerned with the soul and don't you think that the body doesn't really matter? You know, after all, it's one of those externals, not where you're supposed to find your good or place your good. So what's going on here? Epictetus could, of course, respond, well, externals do matter and our use of them is important. And uh, we live in a world in which our relations with other people are, in fact, mediated by being in bodily existence with them. So all of that is, is going to be taken into consideration. You can also see something else going on that will become apparent towards the end of this discussion. Um, Epictetus, like I point, put here, takes cleaning the body as a distinctively human trait, perhaps not something that we would necessarily uh, agree with now, um, but he does see it as something, at least in his time, where you know animals would clean themselves and then people would say, aha, that's like a person. So he thinks that, that cleanliness is something distinctive to human beings, that other animals can share in, uh, in a sort of you know, metaphorical way or partial way, but, but it's really something distinctively human in part because it's really something connected with their relationship with the divine. And as he says, um, here we go, we consider cleanliness to be a special characteristic of man deriving in the first instance from the gods. For since the gods are by nature pure and undefiled, insofar as men have approached them by virtue of reason, just so far are they attached to purity and cleanliness. And then he says, but it's impossible for the nature of man to be altogether pure, seeing as how it's composed of such material as it is. The reason that they've received from the gods endeavors to render this material clean as far as possible. So if you think about our body, our body is in you know, continual flux. Um, you can work on one part of it, and that can be in good shape, and then it seems like other things are always going wrong, sort of like an uh, you know, old car or a house that's continually needing a bit of repair. Um, you know, the older you get, the more you, you realize that the body is indeed like that. But Epictetus thinks that we ought to pay attention to the way in which our, our body exists and, and how we treat it. So... Um, he will say that the most primary kind of cleanliness is the cleanliness of the soul. And what is it for something to be clean? It means for it to be in good condition for performing its function. So what are the functions of the soul? He goes on and he says, um, exercise of choice, refusal, desire, aversion, preparation, purpose, and ascent. All these things that we associate with the mind. What then would make the soul dirty or unclean? What would get in there and gum up the works? What would screw things up in, in that way, the way that dirt and grime do for machinery? Well, it would be what we call bad judgments or dogmata in, in uh, the Greek, right? Uh, opinions is another way of translating that, viewpoints upon things. When we have uh, bad judgments, then that creates an impurity within our, our minds. And sometimes it can get so dirty that we don't even realize it. And this can be reflected also in a, a kind of bodily uncleanliness. When somebody gets so distraught that they, they just stop paying attention to their appearance and to basic personal hygiene, 
Um, Epictetus, you know, talks about that sort of case. He even talks about people who think of themselves as unworthy of, of cleaning themselves. Uh, of course, his advice then is, do you think everybody else is, un is worthy of, of uh, you know, taking in your odor at the same time? Maybe you should think about that. Um, so, let's go on. He says, we ought to maintain some basic standards of cleanliness. And actually, I want to bring up something that I didn't put on the board, uh, just as a sort of uh, aside. He says, um, is anyone demanding that you beautify yourself? He says, heaven forbid except you beautify that which is our true nature, the reason, its judgments, its activities, but your body, you only have to go so far as to keep it cleanly, only so far as to avoid giving offense. You don't need to, you know, uh, go to the gym to, to get ripped, you don't need to wear a lot of makeup, you don't need to buy the latest fashion, you don't need to use uh, very fancy exfoliants or uh, creams or whatever it is that people use, I don't know that much about that. Uh, but they, they were in existence in Roman times, too. People could spend a lot of money on that. You don't need to buy expensive perfumes or colognes uh, or aftershaves or what, what have you. All you need to do is maintain certain basic standards. But why should you do that? Well, one thing that he points out is, look, you've got the resources to do that. And <laughs> he's got some very funny examples here that, that he uses. He says... Um, it's impossible that there should be no discharge of mucus from the nose, since man's body has been composed as it is. You've got sinuses, sinuses drip, right? So what are you going to do with it? Are you going to, you know, he's, he's talking about, uh, we have different names for this. When I was a kid, we'd call it snarfing it up, right? Where people just sort of inhale the mucus back into their system. It's not good for you. It's a good way to get sick, right? It's also not very attractive to, to, to do that. You should blow your nose, right? And Epictetus is saying, uh, quite frankly, um, he says, uh, here we go, if a man... Uh, snuffs back these discharges of mucus, he's not acting as a human being should. Why? Because nature made hands. He's saying you can blow your nose. Likewise, if you don't like taking a hot bath, he says a little bit later, take a cold bath, but take a bath, because that's a possibility for you. Um, he gives a lot of other examples. You know, if you don't want your teeth to be dirty, uh, you can brush them. They didn't have, I think, brushes at that time, but they would clean them with rags or, or other sorts of things. Um, he, he goes on and he says, uh, um, ah, it's impossible that something dirty and needing to be cleaned off should not be left on the person from our sweat and the pressure of our clothes. So for that reason, we've got other things, right? We've got water, oil, hands, a towel, a striggle, niter, and uh, on occasion, every other kind of equipment to cleanse the body. What he's talking about there are all the basic tools that were used in the, the Greek and Roman baths to clean the body. Um, so, you know, in our own time, we might say things like, well, if you, you want to be clean, it's not tough to do. Uh, just find yourself some soap and maybe some shampoo and maybe a toothbrush and some toothpaste and get started there. And then you can go towards more and more complex things. But those are the basics that will probably put you in good stead. Um, he also thinks that we should keep the body in good condition, uh, in part because it's something that we have been given. So he has this metaphor of uh, being given a horse. He says, if nature had committed to your, own, to your care a horse, would you have utterly neglected it? Uh, and... Now I would like you to think that your body has been entrusted to you like a horse. Wash it. Rub it down. Make it so that nobody will turn his back on you or move aside. Um, if we are given this body, we should take care of it. There are certain minimal standards of care. We don't have, again, we don't have to go hog wild. Um, you know, this would probably extend to exercise, but we don't need to be in the gym three hours a day. And we don't need to be trying to meet some sort of you know, weird, uh, culturally conditioned standard of beauty that is almost, difficult, almost impossible to, to attain. Um, you, you get the idea. There, there are um, certain things that we ought to be doing to take care of our bodies. And maintaining some basic cleanliness is part of that. You know, by the way, uh, Epictetus would probably say, since you know, research has shown us that 
that taking a shower every single day might not be the best idea because it strips off oils from the skin. Washing your hair every day might not be the best idea. So we'll wash it twice a week or take a shower every other day or do all these sorts of things, but with the purpose of maintaining the body. There's another very important function to this as well, which is that we don't offend other people by our lack of hygiene. Um, we are social animals. It is important Epictetus things, not just out of etiquette, not just out of a kind of fastidiousness, but in an ethical sense, not to give other people offense when we don't have to. So, you know, he, he again has that example where he says, um, uh, here we go. You're doing something of the sort even here and do not realize it. You think you're worthy of the smell. Though there's people who are, you know, don't really care that they stink, right? Very well, be worthy of it. That's fine for you. Do you think, though, that those who sit by your side, those who recline beside you, those who kiss you, are worthy of it, too? Go away into a wilderness somewhere or other, a place worthy of you, and live alone smelling of yourself, is his advice. Because you're rendering yourself not really fit to take part in, in human society. Um, the last thing that I want to bring up that he talks about here that's very interesting, he, he, uh, he talks about bodily cleanliness providing a starting point for something greater. So it's not uh, a, you know, an end in itself. He says, um, here we go, I should rather have the young man who is experiencing the first stirrings towards philosophy, so a new student, right, come to me with his hair carefully dressed, than with it in a state of desperate neglect and dirty. Why does Epictetus care about how people look when they show up to class? This is a question we could ask about you know, professors and students today, where sometimes students will come in their pajamas or in all sorts of you know, strange outfits that probably shouldn't be worn in a classroom or not having showered for several days or in terrible cases, sometimes weeks. He says, in the, the, the first case shows that there exists in the young man a sort of imaging of beauty and an aiming at comeliness, and where he fancies it to be, that's the body, there he devotes his efforts. With that as a starting point, all that is necessary is to show him the way and say, young man, you're seeking the beautiful, and you do well. Know then that it arises in that part of you where you have your reason, in, in the beauty of the mind in the cleanliness of the mind. Um, so we see coming back full circle to this main point that the primary cleanliness is of the soul. We focus on our bodies because we're given those and they are to a certain extent a reflection of our souls or our minds. And if we think that it's important to clean and, and beautify the body, then we should think even more so of our minds or our souls.